Have you ever had a really short snippet of a dream that you just wrote off because it was so random and small that you decided it couldn't possibly hold any significant meaning for your life? Well, in polarity therapy, which is a form of energy medicine that I practice and teach, there is a saying that comes from hermeticism, actually. As above, so below. As within, so without. And this is a principle that is applied to polarity therapy in the sense that you can look at the, the tiniest part of any one thing and you can find the whole reflected within it. And this concept is really powerful when you apply it to healing and to the body and body work or to any issue you're having in your life. And when you're discussing dreams, often those tiny insignificant seeming dreams actually do hold the keys to the bigger picture of your life. They are the gateway. And you might come upon this short little random dream thinking, why should I even pay attention to this? But if you take the time to really dig into it, this tiny little antechamber of a dream opens up into a huge hall full of possibility and insight and information that is vital for your life. Our dreams are not only our own, And when we share them, it's a really sacred thing that gives you, the listener, the opportunity to try this dream on as your own, not just to hear it as my dream, but to hear what's being reflected back to you for your own life, for your own healing process, for your own growth. And I always want to invite you to really pay attention to not only the words of the dream as you hear them, but also feelings, what feelings come up for you when you hear the different aspects of the dream? What bodily sensations do you notice? How does the dream make you feel? And it's also cool to just think about what pops up in your mind. Notice or pay attention to the thoughts or memories that get triggered as well. Anything that goes on in the environment while you're listening, wherever you are in this moment, could also be giving you information around what is in here for you and what is significant for you. And I really want to invite that, that level of listening, if you feel so inclined, because it then becomes more like a game. It's like a form of divination in and of itself a little bit. You're invited to bring in or call in a question for yourself, for your life, as you listen to the dream. So in this dream, I was a dream teacher, which obviously I am in real life. But I'm a dream teacher with a small group of students teaching a class on how to interpret your dreams. I have a clipboard and some paper on it with a list of questions to ask the students to help them interpret their dreams. As an exercise, I explain that we're going to be moving between buildings and we're going to be walking across this wooded property. In that span of time, I invite all the students to pay attention and notice if an animal shows up. And whatever animal they see, we are going to be breaking that down symbolically. It takes a very short amount of time to cross between buildings, like seconds. But in that time, an owl suddenly falls out of the sky and gets tangled up in a nylon stocking that's hanging between these trees. So the owl is now hanging upside down from the nylon, and the stocking itself is actually also tied up around a street sign that's below the owl. So (laughs) I go through my little list on the clipboard and kind of check off all these different questions. What does the owl represent to you? And how do you feel about it? What do you think it means to you? 
and I go down to noticing the nylon and I'm giving them these prompts and kind of walking through each of the elements of the dream, asking them to pay attention and tune into what these, these things might mean to them. I woke up from the dream and that was it. It was this short little snippet of a dream. I thought how funny that I was just looking at the symbology, teaching the symbology of what the owl could mean in the dream. But in my waking mind, I didn't really know what it meant myself. Whenever I have a dream that I don't fully understand the meaning of it, I often will use a tool called dream reentry, where I will journey back into the dream. I'll just kind of imagine myself back there and I'll engage with the characters of the dream and maybe even try on different perspectives, becoming different characters. In this dream, the first time I re-entered this dream, I learned that it was actually important. I really got this profound sense that I needed to share it with other people and that I also really needed to paint the image of the owl hanging upside down And I've been working on an Oracle card deck for many years now based on my dreams. And it's been a while since I had a dream that really, I thought I was kind of done with those (laughs) images, to be honest. And suddenly here I am with this dream image that's like really asking me to paint it. I'm going to be also sharing what I did differently in my approach to painting this dream than I have ever done before. So if you had a, an issue in your life or a question that you were kind of holding or if one's coming to you now that feels like this dream is speaking to, then I invite you to keep listening with that in mind. I'm going to kind of break down a little bit more about what these things ended up kind of symbolizing to me. But regardless of how I interpreted this dream, I think it's cool to just notice and pay attention to what feels meaningful for you as we go along. One of my favorite astrologers, Rob Bresney, posted right after I had this dream about how much value he has received from doing dream work and how it's been really important for him in his life to listen to his dreams. And he mentioned one of his teachers, Gail Delaney, who wrote a book called Living Your Dreams. And he recommended this. I had never heard of her. And so immediately I ordered the book because I'm always interested in learning more methods and ways of working with my dreams. So I received this book in the mail just a few days ago, and I still have not had time yet to read the book, but I decided for this episode to just open it at random and see what Gail has to teach us about dream interpretation, specifically in relation to this dream and this episode. So the page that I opened to at random in the book talks about how to do conduct a dream interview as though you might want to write these questions down on cue cards or perhaps a clipboard. And <laughs> the questions are really basic, like what's the setting that you're in? What's the mood? What does it remind you of? What does it feel like? And she also recommends that as you observe each of these elements within the dream or characters that you really try to be as objective as possible as though you're describing these to an alien who doesn't know at all what you're talking about. Now this whole concept of objectively describing the characters or objects in the dream as though you're talking about them with an alien is something that my teacher Robert Moss also suggested but I didn't realize that that idea originated with Gail Delaney and I just thought it was really cool to find the origin of that practice that I have already been utilizing but it also just seemed pretty significant to me that myself as the dream teacher in the dream really was kind of conducting the dream interview with each of these students. And I didn't even know about that as a practice until days later. So there's that. 
It might be interesting for you to try this practice with your own dreams. I'm going to sort of give you an example of how to do it as I move through each of these elements in my dream, breaking down the sort of objective symbolic meaning. I want to invite you to tune back into maybe the question or the life issue that you were contemplating in relationship to this dream, thinking about how these could be relating to your question for your life. The first and most interesting symbolic element in this dream is, of course, the owl that's hanging upside down by the nylon. And when I think about what an owl is, and I describe that as though I'm telling an alien who's never seen an owl before, the first things that come into my mind about an owl are that they fly high above and are able to see the macro perspective the bird's eye view, they can actually see super, super well. So I think about owls as having clear sight. They can even see in the dark and they can turn their head 360 degrees pretty much and see everything around them. This gives them a great perspective. They're also nocturnal and I know that owls tend to be related to things that happen in the night, to mysteries, to death, to dreams. So owl is a, an, a far-seeing, clear-sighted animal. Also, they're known for their wisdom, right? And I personally have an association with owls and my own sort of higher self, and that's shown up in past dreams and past dream journeys for me. So that's what the owl represents for me. And seeing the owl tangled up in this nylon stocking hanging upside down, to me, reminds me of the hanged man in the tarot deck. That was one of the first things that I thought of. And when I shared this dream with a friend, she also mentioned that she thought of the hanged man from the Toth tarot deck hanging in front of a veil, this sort of mesh fabric or veil between realities. And what I know about the hanged man is that it's often representing being suspended and having to take a pause around an issue or something that's going on, taking on a new perspective, looking at it upside down, turning things around and seeing them in a different way. It's a lot about surrender. So that leads me to really look at this wisdom, clear sightedness, but turning it upside down. You're not flying right now and you need to look at something very specific in front of you that you can't not see. <laughs> and when I re-entered this dream and I became the owl hanging upside down, what I saw was myself as the dream teacher standing there with the clipboard and the students. And I had to see myself as that teacher from an upside down perspective. And that really clued me in. I was like, oh, I'm supposed to look at my teaching from another perspective. In relation to your question, how is it that you need to see this, this issue or this question of your life from a new perspective? How could you turn it upside down? How could you suspend judgment and really take a pause and view yourself from a different perspective. When I try to dig into the meaning behind the nylon stocking that the owl was hanging by, I really had very little idea about what that could mean for me. So I tried another tool out, which is something I love to do when I'm really drawing a blank about something, which is what I call Google divination. <laughs> and when I tried this with the nylon stocking, what I found that was most interesting to me, and it was also the very first hit, was an article by the Smithsonian Magazine called How Nylon Stockings Changed the World. 
And this article was all about how nylons were actually the first man-made material that was developed in a lab uh, that actually didn't use anything that came from nature. Uh, it was said in the article to have the strength of steel and the sheerness of cobwebs. And it came to represent the epitome of human superiority over nature. Playing with some free associations around what the possible meaning of this could be, for some reason it really started to feel related to technology or the interweb, just the cobweb, the mesh, the veil that was tied around the owl, causing him to sort of hang there in midair. All of that really just started to remind me of how I'm between platforms as I'm teaching, especially because when I looked outward as though I was the owl, what I saw was myself with the clipboard as the teacher. So it made me sort of view how I was teaching from another perspective. And I could feel this sense of the hang up around my technological switch from one platform to another and how this really does feel very much like the hanged man situation of surrender, waiting, pausing, uh, hanging out, just <laughs> sort of observing from different perspectives. When I really put myself into the position of the owl and saw myself as the teacher from this new perspective upside down, I realized that this pause is actually on purpose, that there is a good reason for it, and that as I hang around here <laughs> waiting for the next thing to occur in a state of surrender a little bit, my real job is to just observe, is to utilize my owl-like perception, really endeavor to see things from a different perspective. usually have been painting out at my art studio in the forest and this time I just could not get myself there. It was about 30 degrees outside and I knew it would be about 30 degrees inside and I just didn't have it in me to get there. But the funny thing that happened is later that night I received a text from a group thread that my extended family is all on of like 27 people or something and this photo of the exact owl from my dream popped up on my phone on the text and I thought this is too weird one of my cousins or somebody saw the owl that was the exact owl from my dream that I was supposed to be painting today but I never made it out to my studio and then I actually opened the text and realized that it was sent by my stepdad who lives on this property where I teach and work and have my art studio. <laughs> and so the owl was actually right outside my studio on the same land, on the same side of the property as where I would have been if I had gone out there that day, like I planned. And immediately I felt like I had missed something. I had missed this brilliant opportunity to see the owl in person, that it had obviously showed up there for me, and I, I didn't show up for it. And then I, as I shared this with my partner, he, he just kind of looked at me and he said, it's just a sign. <laughs> and that's when I remembered the road sign in the dream. That was the only thing that's, that was sort of out of place that I didn't even include in the painting because I didn't really see the point of it. But it was so funny as soon as he said that, that this text was a sign. <laughs> I knew that that's what the sign meant. And he was right. It was a sign that the presence of the owl was with me. And it, it wasn't a missed opportunity. But I did have to look again at how I was approaching the painting process and why I felt resistance to going out there. And so what I did was I decided to just go about it in a really upside down way. And I went out to the studio, I gathered up all my painting supplies, I set it up in the middle of my living room, which I never do. And I was like, I'm gonna paint this in one night. Sometimes paintings, especially that are of things that are real, 
take me months or years to complete. So this was a completely ridiculous thing. And then, of course, my family all came over and we ended up having dinner and my daughter and my partner's son. And, you know, it was just it ended up being like a party in my kitchen. And meanwhile, I was in my living room painting still and I almost completed the painting in that one night. I approached it with a light heart and with very little perfectionism, very playfully, with a lot of courage and trust. And that was really, really profoundly uh, different from <laughs> how I have approached painting in the past at different times. So it was incredible. I did work on it the next day a little bit, but I went dancing in the morning and I came home and I decided to dance with the painting. I stood on my head and contemplated the painting. I painted the trees upside down because, you know, why not? I tried just painting every single thing upside down. And I just was really playful in how I worked with this painting. And it ended up being really, really fun. And it's one of my favorite paintings, I think, that I've, I've ever done. I definitely want to encourage you to try on all of these elements for yourself, taking the dream on as your own dream. What does all of this mean for you in the application of of your life, how can this dream be informing for you? So I would love to know if you would like to write in and share your thoughts or interpretations. Share in the comments here if you're watching the video. I would love to know what you think and how this dream relates to your own process. What's your takeaway? And maybe what is something in your life that you could approach upside down or a little differently or a little more playfully? And how can that offer you greater wisdom and insight even than flying high above? That's the question. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode of A Lone Traveler's Guide to the Divine. I really appreciate you listening, watching, commenting, sharing, and being a part of this sacred community. Thank you. We're